Are you a warrior? Maybe you're easily stressed. Are you quickly negative? What about kind of pessimistic? Are you somewhat of a doomsdayer? Well, guess what? You don't have to be. Fear doesn't have to win all the time. Face it with us. Let's learn how to deal with it all. Living fearless. Tonight, we are going to continue on our series talking about living fearless. I don't know about you, but my life has been full of fears for many years. It's not just a, a new thing in my life. It's not something that just popped up in, the, in my 40s. It's not something that, that gradually came on in my 30s. It's something that's actually lived quite a long time. Fear. The problem is that it, it, it just grabs a hold of us. It, it, it paralyzes us. It keeps us frozen in life. Living fearless. It's a tall order. Maybe you don't know this, but I haven't always looked this good. There was a time when my hairline was quite a bit further down on my forehead, and there was that time that my belt line was squeezed just a little bit closer together. Life seemed simpler then. I woke up in the morning, and instead of coffee, I grabbed a glass of milk, and instead of rushing to work, I ran towards the school bus. My day was planned by somebody else, and truth be known, I never really gave tomorrow much of a thought. But that doesn't mean it was easy. Far from it, really. School was full of problems, maybe not for you, but definitely for me. It was full of complicated decisions that I had to make. Each selection had that potential of forever making or breaking me on the schoolyard ranking of social order. Choices like which pair of pants do I need to wear? when I'm heading out that door, what, what shirt to put on, who to talk to, and that ever-important question of who do I sit next to in the cafeteria. You may laugh and giggle at this if you want to, but to a grammar school kid, this is serious stuff. This is important stuff. Truth is, I wanted to matter. I wanted to, to make a difference. I wanted to matter. I wanted to wear the right things, look a certain way, and be that certain person. I wanted to be the first person picked on the playground for the team. I never wanted to feel left out. Maybe you can relate. But as hard as I tried, it didn't end up that way. Instead, this was me right here. I was abnormally tall, crazily skinny, big need, lanky, bad fashioned, and a nerd. That's me. Sure, there were, there were moments of so-called glory in, in my life. There was that one time that I got the game-winning goal, and, and then there was that time that I beat Alan Kirkland on a wrap-off, if you can believe that. But hindsight is twenty twenty. The truth is, I didn't look the part, sound that cool, or really, I didn't even know the right people. And truth is I believed I didn't matter. And before you might laugh at some of this too hard, let me let you in on a little secret. I bet most of you can relate. 
I'm just guessing, I'm just guessing somewhere in the middle of this, there have been times in your life that you felt like you didn't matter either. And then with all my degrees and certifications that I have, let me tell you the most life-changing lesson I ever learned. You ready? Here it is. Even the cool kids cry. The world won't tell you that secret. They won't inform you to that. The world wants you to believe that real men never cry and that it's better for you to live some fake life on Facebook than it is to live an honest life before God. That's what the world wants you to know. But I've got a word for you tonight. I've got a big word. The world doesn't matter, and you should never listen to the world. The world's really, really filled with these crazy messages, these, these crazy things that just don't make sense. Listen, listen to this. I, I grew up in Birmingham, and there was a billboard off of I-20 for years that said this. Can't read? The rest of you will get that in about 30 minutes from now. The billboard said, can't read? Call 205. 969-1234, a lot of good it did whoever was trying to read the board. And I hope he wasn't driving. For those that remember the mall in Gautier, how about this one? There was a, there was a shop in, in the side where the Keesler ATM was. Y'all remember that right there? There was a shop over there in that corner, and it said this for years. I'd walk by there, and I'd giggle all the time. It said, ears pierced, why you wait? And I'm just sitting there, and I'm thinking, who's piercing ears while you're running? But my favorite part was the bottom part of the sign that said on Thursdays, they pierce them half off. Now, that's a lot of piercing going on. <laughs> the world is full of crazy messages. How about this one? I saw this at a park one time. It said this, soccer not allowed. Soccer is only to be played on an archery range. Now, I don't know how fast the soccer players can run, but I hope that they can dodge a flaming arrow. But here's my favorite one. This one's my favorite right here. I saw it on a vet sign years ago. <laughs> Cats and dogs, spayed and neuters, $75. Seniors, $50. So if you're looking for a good bargain and you're over 65, there you go. We'll load up the church van and we'll just head over there and we'll have us a good old time. The world is sending crazy messages, stupid messages. They're screaming as loud as they can, listen to me, and what they're saying is pure nuts. Folks, don't get your advice from the world. Don't listen to them and don't let them tell you what really matters in life. A few years back, one of the cool kids in school messaged me on Facebook. I want you to listen. I, I went back on Facebook today, and, and, and I just wrote down what she said. This is what she said, okay? This is one of the cool kids talking to the nerd of the class. Hi, John. I hope that this finds you well. I don't usually do this, but I know and I see what a strong faith now have, and I'm in a bad way right now. My heart and soul are completely broken, and in turn, so am I, and things are getting worse. John, will you pray for me? Oh, the memories, John. There were good times. There were better times. I wish that I could be a kid again, especially right now. I think I'm near my lowest point I have ever been in my life. I'm just depressed bad, and I've tried to pull up out of everything, but it's just not working. I've been praying. No, I've been begging God to take this from me. This heartbreak, it just won't end, and I don't know. Please continue to pray for me. I don't know how I'm going to survive. She listened to the world. How many times in your life have you thought, man, I wished I could be a kid again? 
How many times have you ever wished that you mattered and, and you could go back and restart and reset that clock? Those, the, that, that what you mattered is exactly what was said and that, that what you did, it really mattered and it made a difference. That who you are, it really mattered. How many times have you screamed out to God asking if he's even paying attention to the problems that's going on down here? How many times have you yelled up to him trying to grab his attention and saying things like, God, are you even watching this? There's a verse over in Matthew. It's one of my favorite verses, and I quote it all the time, actually. So if you're one of our kids, you've heard me say it. It's in Matthew 10, 28, and it's, it's this section, and, and Jesus has called his disciples. He's, he's pushing for his disciples to go out. He's, he's named all of them in Matthew. He, he's, he's pushing them to go out. And, and there's this whole section in chapter 10 where he's talking about all the problems that are going on in life, all the ups and downs, all the this and the that, all the problems. And then in Matthew 10, 28, he says this, and I just believe it's very, very poignant to the situation. He says, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They can't touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both your soul and body in hell. What's the price of two sparrows, one copper coin? But not a single sparrow can even fall to the ground without the Father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Something so small, so insignificant. In fact, Luke records it like this. Luke says that, that, that two sparrows... Are, are a coin or a penny, but, but if you buy two of them, if you give me two pennies, I'll throw a fifth one in for free. Have you ever felt like that fifth sparrow? You didn't matter. You were insignificant. You weren't even bought. You were just thrown in as part of the package. Jesus is saying this, in the middle of your craziest situation, in between the toughest of all the times, God has not forgotten you. He has not left you, nor has he forsaken you. You matter. He counts the very hairs on your head and numbers each one of them. The psalmist wrote it like this. I, I, I love it. The psalmist wrote, he said that he captures and keeps every one of your tears in a bottle. He loves you that much. And whether you know it or not, we matter. We matter. We kick and we scream. We, we cry foul and accuse God of forgetting us. But I, I wonder if he ever, ever just sits up there and wants to remind us of this, that it's not him that has forgotten anything. It's probably us. We've forgotten who we are and who we are in him and that we're valuable to him. Hooked on mattering. Now, don't be afraid. The title, even though it came in the middle, really, you need to know that we're halfway done. I don't want to scare you in that way. The whole purpose of the movie, the whole theme of this movie is this understanding that we matter and that Peter needs to remember exactly who he is. Well, just like that, we need to remember that. We need to remember who we are. We need to know that God cares about us. Love came early for me. It was the fourth grade. Her name was Deanna Crump. I still remember what she looked like. She was a fourth grade fox. She had dark hair and she had dark eyes. She could outrun most every boy in class, but she never really did it because she didn't want to show us up. It was Valentine's Day, and I decided that I would declare my love for her by writing the note. I grabbed my desk, and I'm holding on. I want you to picture this. 
I dig in and I found my number two pencil because I guess number three pencils never worked. But she grabbed my, I grabbed my number two pencil and I grabbed a, a, a piece of that loose leaf wide ruled paper and I started the note. Here I go. I'm starting to write. I love you do you love me check yes or no talk about the good old days if Harvey were here, he would be excited. He had a prenup before the marriage ever happened. <laughs> I folded it up, and I slid it over to her. And I watched her as she opened up the note. She turned to me, and I swear she winked. I saw it in her eyes. My socks rolled down and up my legs. It was awesome. <laughs> she reached into her desk and she grabbed her number two pencil. She marked the note and she passed it over to me. I picked it up. I took a look. And there it was bigger than anything I could imagine. No. <laughs> Love ended quick for me in life in the fourth grade. I got a little mean to her. See, the next note I wrote was this. It wasn't really so nice. It was one of those Valentine hate poems that guys can write. You know the ones that go something like this. Roses are red and violets are blue. Mm, your mom is good looking. What happened to you? And I looked at it. If she wasn't going to play the game, she needed to get out of the ballpark. I was going to love her if she loved me back. It's the world's definition of love. But there's good news in the fourth grade. Looking right in front of Miss Deanna Crump was this mm, beautiful girl named Robin Franklin. I took that pencil and I scratched out best I could with that old rubber eraser that didn't really work. Deanna's name and I wrote Robin just as big as life on there. And I took and I, I erased the no box. <laughs> Who says you can't learn in the fourth grade? And I passed it over to her. And she checked yes. Life was good in the fourth grade. The world says this, I'll love you if you'll love me. I'll love you if you do something for me. And if you won't love me, I'll not love you back. But God says this, I'll love you whether you ever love me or not. That's what true love is. It's found in these scriptures like Romans 8. I, I get excited when I think about this. It says, yet in all things that we are more than conquerors for Christ Jesus, for him who loved us. It says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. He Amen. loves us. 
And he never asked if we loved him first. He loves us. You think you've been forgotten. You think that you don't matter, but God says, I'm right there, and I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm right here in every bit of your ups and downs. I am standing by your side. You matter to me. That's what God says. The world may send you crazy messages in your life, but my love will never change. That's what God wants to tell you tonight. Now, I'm a big guy. There's no real hiding that. I get it. Coupled with a few bad choices in my busy life and a whole lot of fast food when I probably shouldn't have done it and a lot of of lack of exercise that I should have had. And what you see in front of you is 200 and some odd pounds. Over the years, I've added a lot of weight to me. A lot of poundage. I bought a set of those uh, fancy scales one time, actually recently, and I'm on the phone with my brother when those scales come in, and he's talking about it, and he, he's, he's, he's sitting there, and I'm telling him what all these things do, and these scales, I'm reading the box, and they'll do everything but tell you the shoe size that you got on. It, it'll tell you your weight and your water weight and your, your BMI and everything else, and he said, well, do me a favor and step on them. All right, so I step up on him. He said, well, what do they say? I said, they say, get off. (laughs) Folks, life puts weight on you. Maybe not the fat that I have on me. But how about this? Some of you are carrying the weight of bad marriage in your life. It's been a tough road, and it's weighing you down even right now. Some of you are carrying the weight of addictions in your life. Some of you are carrying the weight of low self-esteem in there. Some of you are carrying the weights of abuse, things that happened in your past and things that are happening right now, and you just don't want to tell anybody. The weight of depression just seems to never leave your side. Some of you are putting on weight left and right. Life is weighing you down. And when you get to the mirror, you don't even recognize yourself. You reminisce about when you were a kid and all those times when life was so much simpler. You remember the plans that you made, and you remember that those plans never really worked out. And you find yourself covered with the weight of the world, and you've forgotten who you are. And you think you're un recognizable. You've added weight to your life. And sometimes we realize that we've forgotten who we are. Question for you tonight, have you let life and the circumstances you're living in right now cover you with weight? What if I told you that I believe Jesus was speaking to you when he was talking about those sparrows. What if I just ask you this question, is it even possible that he had you in his mind when he said that verse? How about this question? What would it take for you to get a real glimpse of who you really are? Did you notice, in the film at least, and I know it was just a clip, it took somebody else to push Peter's weight aside to see the real him. Sometimes you have to borrow from someone else's faith. Sometimes you have to take somebody else's word. Years ago, I worked for the Home of Grace up in Van Cleef, Mississippi. There was a guy by the name of Burns Dews. Burns has passed away now, so 
I get to use this story with him. Burns got a little drunk one night while he was still at the home, and he stole one of the trucks. And of all the places Burns could go, Burns decided that he was going to go to Keesler Air Force Base. Hmm. When you're going to break the law, you probably don't need to go to a military establishment. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Burns got drunk and he ran that old truck that he stole into a ditch. And the MPs the next morning were calling the office. And Burns was a talker. And the MPs just said, if you'll come get him and get him to shut up, we'll let him go. He come walking in. I shared an office back then with a friend of mine named Josh, and our offices were small, and he walked in, and, and Burns' mouth was just to go. And ch -ch 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 -ch. He said, I, Josh, I, I think that if I do this, and if I think if I do that, and blah, 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 I think, I think, I think, and Josh stopped him. He held up his hand, and he said, that's the problem, Burns. Your thinker's broke. Now hush. Got a question. Tonight, do you need to turn off some of the world's chatter in your ear and listen to some family members talk to you and tell you that you're loved and you matter? Sometimes our thinkers broke. We let weight and life pile on as big as anything. We let the world send us confusing messages left and right. And God is screaming as loud as he can. And he's saying this, you matter. You matter. Maybe you came in here tonight and you feel like life is just a little bit too much for you to bear. You're weighted down and you feel like you don't matter in life. And maybe this life would be better if you weren't a part of it. I don't know if it's gotten that bad for you tonight or not, but I promise you in a room this size, somebody has had that thought. I want to tell you tonight, that that voice in your head is a liar. And I want to tell you tonight that the world is lying to you. Yep. I want to tell you tonight that you are surrounded by a group of family who love you, that want to grab a hold of you, and want to hug you and tell you that you matter. Listen here, Church on the Rock. If this church is ever to survive and become the impact that this community needs, it's only going to happen when we first lo start loving each other inside this room. Some of us are sitting here and we don't know the person next to us. Some of us come in here and we feel insignificant. Some of us are coming in here and we've got life's problems and we're just waiting on someone to say, man, I love you. Is there anything I can do with you? Can I pray with you about something? Some of us, this is the only socialization you ever get is right here in this walls. Some of us, this really is our family. Amen? Amen. You matter to God. You matter to God. You matter to God. Let's stand up. I'm going to open the altars just for a brief second. I'm not going to open them long. If you like, you Again, we are incredibly glad that you joined us here today at Church on the Rock. We encourage you to go to the website. There you can find any of our archive podcasts. You can send us an email about how God's working in your life or prayer request. Or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Have a blessed day.